Thank you for joining us for Guidance on Managing Social Media Records. This is a records management seminar delivered by the United States National Archives and Records Administration's National Records Management Training Program. In this session, Beth Cron introduces and explains NARA's guidance on managing social media records. Now, let's join the seminar. Today is the um, Guidance on Managing Social Media Records uh, online briefing with Ms. Beth Cron. Beth Cron is a records policy analyst at the National Archives and Records Administration. She's a member of the Records Management Policy section within the Office of the Chief Records Officer. The Records Management Policy section has produced guidance on managing email records with the capstone approach, cloud computing, and email archiving applications. Beth is a 2008 graduate of the School of Information at the University of Michigan, and she specialized in archives and records management. She currently serves as the Vice Chair of the Society of American Archivists and Records Management Roundtable. Okay, with all of that said, I will now pass it over to Ms. Beth Cron. All right. Well, uh, thank you, for everyone, for taking the time today to attend, to attend this session or to watch this webinar. Um, so first of all, I'll address uh, the numbering on this slide here. So you can see it says NARA Bulletin 2014-XX. So um, this was intended to come out, and then we all had a little shutdown. So um, we're expecting that this, will, this bulletin will be coming out very soon. So you should watch um, the Records Express blog and our website to see when that, when that comes out. So our agenda today is to review this, this soon-to-be-released bulletin on guidance on managing social media records. So what we're going to do is review the purpose of the bulletin, define what social media records are for the purpose of the bulletin. Um, then we're going to identify the changes for managing social media records and some possible ways to address these challenges. Um, we will also talk about scheduling social media content implementing social media capture and records management responsibilities. NARA's records management policy team develops this guidance with input from subject matter experts across our agency, the National Archives, and including our Office of General Counsel. Uh, we also requested feedback from the public on the Records Express blog. So you may have seen it posted there a while back. And uh, we also requested feedback from the Federal Records Council. Uh, we then incorporated this feedback into the bulletin. So this bulletin supersedes or replaces the 2010 guidance on managing records in Web 2.0 social media platforms. There are some small differences between the two bulletins and two bigger differences that I wanted to point out today. First, uh, this new bulletin includes more information on capturing records created when federal agencies use social media. Second, the, bulletin, uh, the previous bulletin said that content may be a federal record. Uh, we changed the language to now say that content on social media is likely a federal record. So I just wanted to point out these, these two differences for you. The bulletin contains high-level requirements and best practices for capturing records created when federal agencies use social media. Federal agencies are currently using uh, many different social media platforms for many different purposes. And what we heard is that they, they needed more guidance for capture. But while we all may be aware of the most common social media platforms, uh, let me give an overview of how we define social media for the purposes of this bulletin. Social media includes blogs, wikis, social networks, photo libraries, virtual worlds, uh, location-based services, and also video sharing sites. What social media does is includes various activities integrating web technology, social interaction, and user-generated content. So we, we know that agencies use social media both internally and externally to share information, support their business processes, and to connect people to the government. Social media also allows individuals to collaborate, uh, create, organize, edit, make comments on, uh, combine, and share content. Uh, so the reason we have Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook on this slide 
is that they were all identified in a GAO report uh, titled Federal Agencies Needing Policies and Procedures for Managing and Protecting Information They Access and Disseminate. This report identified these three uh, tools as the most common, commonly used social media platforms in use across the U.S. government. However, we do know that many other social media tools are being used in agencies as well. An interesting thing is that you can, you can look up the various tools that are being used in the government on GSA's social media registry. And what you can do here is you can put in a URL and you can verify that a social media account is managed by the U.S. federal government. And so you can see also other tools that are being used by other agencies. You can look up uh, accounts that are managed by agencies, elected officials, heads of agencies, or um, members of the president's cabinet. So it's an interesting tool if you're also, if you're looking for agencies that are using the same tool as your agency. Uh, it is possible that many individuals don't consider content uh, in social media as a record at this time. However, uh, we encourage and urge agencies to consider the definition of a record and the management implications of that. So social media content that meets the definition of a federal record must be managed in accordance with all applicable laws and regulations. Uh, the statute and its implementing regulations place responsibility with each agency uh, to determine what federal records they create or receive. So to get to um, answering the question of if social media content is a federal record, we included a series of questions in the bulletin that agencies should ask. And if the answer is yes to any of these questions, then the content is likely a federal record. So what we basically have here is the list of non-exhaustive questions that can help agencies determine the record status of their social media content. So if you go through this list and ask, these, ask yourself these questions, if the social media content meets, uh, is, yeah, if the answers to these questions are yes, then the content is likely a federal record. So these include, uh, does it contain evidence of an agency's policies, business, or mission? Uh, is the information only available on the social media site? So that is, it would not be available in any other uh, agency website. Uh, does the agency use the tool to convey official agency information? Is there a business need for the information? So if you had to look at this list, and if you had to quickly consider these questions now, uh, I'm curious if you'd say that you have social media content at your agency that meets the definition of a federal record. So uh, if this isn't something that you know at this time, or it's not something that you've thought about or had discussions at your agency, then this could be one of the, the takeaways for discussion. We also talk in the bulletin about the fact that there is functionality built into social media, uh, such as the ability to comment on something or uh, and the interactive piece that may, in fact, provide added functionality and value to the content. Social media content may be a federal record when the use of the social media provides this added functionality. That is, for example, um, can receive comments and respond uh, on a piece of policy or or information, and this is more of a social interaction. So it may provide um, more record content than it would just be available if something were just posted on an agency website, for instance. Um, so the additional functionality could include also enhanced searchability, opportunities for public comment, as I mentioned, or some other form of collaboration. So agencies have the responsibility to identify the complete record. And the complete record includes the content, the context of where that content appeared, um, and also the structure, and along with any associated metadata. Metadata is the information about that content. For example, at a very basic level, this could include the author and data creation. If we take the example of Twitter and we look at a tweet, the content could be the tweet itself. 
and the 140 characters or less that make up that tweet. Uh, the context could be the, the threaded responses to that tweet or the replies, and then the structure is captured in Twitter via the, the threaded response. And Twitter actually captures a great number of, of metadata elements for each tweet. And if you haven't done that before, it's pretty interesting to Google it and to see all of the, the pieces of, of metadata that Twitter does capture in their system. So capturing the content, context, and structure, and any associated metadata forms the complete record. This in turn ensures that the records have not been changed, that they were created by the person who supposedly created it, and when it was purported to be created. The bulletin also describes the many record keeping challenges associated with records created in collaborative environments. Uh, you may also have other challenges at your agency. Uh, this is a, also a non-exhaustive list, but some that we highlighted in the bulletin include uh, content that is located in multiple places. So this can make it difficult to determine where the official record lives or where it's located. Uh, another is the ownership and control of data that resides with a third party. So this could be asking the question of who owns the content. Uh, another challenge is the identification of records. And as I just said before, is what, what of um, the content on the social media platform makes up the complete record, as well as what meta metadata is necessary. Uh, another is the development and implementation of record schedules. This also includes the ability to transfer and permanently delete records, apply legal holds, or perform other records management functions. And one that we chose to address in this bulletin in more detail is uh, capture. And so this includes the capture of frequently updated records. As we know that all social media is dynamic and it often changes, and this also poses a challenge for the ability to apply the record schedule and determine when the cutoff is. And as I mentioned before, capture of complete records, making sure that they're captured in a manner that ensures their authenticity and availability. One that uh, we thought of was that public expectations could be that all web content is both permanently valuable and accessible. So there could be this idea that it will all be available in, in the future. And I think we saw an example of this with um, folks turning to Internet Archive or other places when a number of federal websites were down during the, the shutdown. And then the, the last uh, challenge I'll address today is the handling of records containing personally identifiable information, or PII. So it's a good question to ask at your agency how they're handling social media that contains personally identifiable information. And that will most likely be addressed in, in a social media policy. So what are some of the ways to address these challenges? Uh, agencies need to, identif uh, need to establish, also identify, processes and policies, and also the record keeping roles for identifying, managing, and capturing social media records. So some of the areas to include or address when developing these policies, procedures, and also the roles and responsibilities include uh, identifying records, defining the ownership of those records or content, um, the terms of service agreement with the social media provider and what that may say, communicating these policies internally uh, to the agency to making and also externally to make sure that those in the agency know the policies and the public is also aware. And then monitoring the use and value of social media. It could change over, over the course of an agency using Twitter or Facebook. And then finally, uh, monitoring changes to those terms of service agreements. As we've, we've probably heard about these social media providers often will change those, change their public terms of service agreements, and these could have implications for agencies as well. 
in addition, we recommend that agencies establish a social media working group. This social media working group could be made up of records management staff, web managers, social media managers, uh, information technology staff, uh, also privacy and information security staff. You may want to also include your agency's counsel and any other relevant stakeholders that you may, may think of at your agency. And so what the working group would do is identify complete records and it makes sure they include the content, context structure, and any necessary metadata. They would also look at the existing record schedules, uh, review them, and determine if social media records are covered. And if they aren't covered there, then, then they'd have to take that next step of making sure that they're scheduled. And then finally, discuss records management issues before rolling out any new social media initiatives or changing the current use of a social media tool. Agencies, as I said, must identify the official record and determine how it will be managed when scheduling social media. They also need to keep in mind that some social media records may be temporary uh, with a transitory um, short or, or long-term retention, all temporary, but they could have different implications for those and that some social media records may even be permanent. Um, and one example we give is a blog of an agency senior official or the head of the agency. So this slide here includes uh, material that was previously in a decision tree in the superseded bulletin that I talked about. After agencies have identified their social media records, they should determine whether that existing disposition authority or record schedule applies. And so this could, could also include uh, a general record schedule item. And if that content is not covered by an existing disposition authority, a new schedule should be developed. Uh, they should also identify if content is enhanced by using social media. So that's if, if by using social media the content, um, the value is changed. And if that's the case, then a new schedule should also be developed that encompasses the complete record. And that includes the content, context structure, and metadata. Agencies should also identify if there's been a change in the social media tool, uh, in the use of it, and if that affects the record value of the information. The platform itself could change, or, and this could affect the value of the record and what should be scheduled. And then finally, regularly review uh, tools for their use and the associated record schedules. So this is um, a kind of a to-do list of things, things to consider. When uh, agencies are doing their day-to-day -day monitoring of social media, they may, there may be content that falls outside of what should be on the site, such as spam. Social media may include content which is also inconsistent with an agency's comment and posting policies, and this may also require removal from the site. Uh, some removed content, such as spam, may be non-record, while other types of content are records that must have an approved disposition authority. Uh, agencies should consult, con consult with their general counsel about these policies for moderating content and make sure that it's consistent with their First Amendment obligations and any uh, federal laws. That brings us to the discussion of the capture of social media content. We uh, included a broader discussion of social media capture in this bulletin versus a 2010 bulletin as we heard that this is one of the topics that agencies were interested in hearing more about. Oh, I see that there was a question from William and he asked, by record value, are you referring to the appraisal value? So in looking at uh, the records, you uh, go through and ask the questions of, does this meet the definition of a record? And then uh, you would look at your existing record schedules and see if those apply. And if it doesn't look like that applies to that content, then you'd be 
at the point of drafting a new schedule item and submitting that to NARA and then talking about the appraisal value of, of those records. So I suppose <laughs> they're two different things. So it's first asking the question of is, is the content a record? And then if it is, do you have an existing disposition authority that applies, yes or no? So that's kind of the, the decision tree that I was talking about. And if yes, use the, that schedule. And if not, then have to create a new schedule that applies to that social media content. So we're talking about the discussion of uh, capture of social media content. So once records are identified and associated with an approved record schedule, agencies must decide how to, how to manage social media records. Uh, one change in this bulletin is the statement that temporary records that are transitory or of a short-term retention may not need to be captured and can be maintained in the social media platform. So this could mean that if the records are transitory, of, they need to be kept for a very short term, uh, they have a short term retention. This could mean that the records can, could continue to live on Facebook or Twitter or wherever they live without any further intervention from the agency. That said, agencies do need to assess their business needs and evaluate any risks associated with leaving those records in social media. A question that frequently may come up is, how can I delete records from a social media platform when my record schedule says, when my record schedule says it's time to do so? And this may not always be possible, and in a way it probably defeats the purpose of social media. So this is a question that agencies should ask and consider before either using the platform or when making that, that records, when, when looking at their record schedules. So capture is particularly important for temporary records with either long-term retentions or those, those records that are permanent. And these records should be exported or captured from the social media platform into an agency record keeping system. The options for capture will depend on the technical configuration of the platform. This will depend on, on which tool is being used. As we said, it's important to capture the complete record. And what's been determined as the complete record may also affect the choice of, of capture tool or how that, how that capture is done. Uh, we've included this bulleted list in the bulletin as various methods for capturing social media records. So these are the, the general, general methods of doing so. And, and don't include, we don't include a specific tools in the bulletin. So the first option is using a web crawling software to create local versions of the site. And an example of this is HTTrack, which is an open source, freely available tool that can be used for web crawling and is typically used for uh, web archi the archiving of websites. Another option is using web capture tools to capture content and migrate to other formats. So this includes services such as Hanzo, Iterasi, Smarsh, or Archive Social. And these are a fee for service and they will, they will capture, or you can read their, their, their literature and see that they'll capture uh, the full package of social media content. Another option is using platform-specific application programming interfaces, or APIs, to, uh, to pull content from sites. The platforms may change their, their support for these type of, for their APIs. For example, Twitter had recently, earlier this year, turned off their support for RSS. And this was a way that some, some people may have been capturing their Twitter content. So this is something to remember that the platform could change their support and uh, the support that they provide to developers or for export. Since then, people have found ways of getting around that. Another option is using RSS feeds, aggregators, or manual methods to capture content. And then the final one on the list here is using tools 
that are actually built into the social media tool to export content. Tools such as Twitter, Facebook have export options available. And so agencies should look at this, this export that they provide and see if it captures the complete record uh, for, the purposes, for their purposes. Agency needs may also affect the selection of a capture tool. Uh, we recommend that agencies provide training to those who are responsible for managing that content so that they know how and when uh, to use the capture tools. That is, if it, if it isn't automated at an agency level. So some of these tools could, could uh, capture content at an agency level. If you, could, you put in all the feeds into the tool, and then it could capture them. But if that's not the case, if it's a distributed responsibility, then, then the staff that are responsible should have training on how to do that. Agencies may also need to work with third parties, either the provider of the social media platform or a capture provider to implement capture. As we also discussed in the previous bulletin, agencies are responsible for managing their records. And at a minimum, these responsibilities include the ability to identify and retrieve federal records that are created and maintained on social media. We'd like to point out that agencies should be aware when using tools, whether they are free tools or paid services, that the provider could discontinue their service or delete information from an agency's account. Just something, something to be aware of and to consider. On the flip side, agencies could also stop using a social media platform. But in either of these situations, the agency is still responsible for capture and records management responsibilities. One thing we point to in the bulletin is trying to make, sh make use of the capabilities of the provider. So agencies should determine if the provider can, can export a copy of the complete records as the agency defines it. Uh, one suggestion I've heard from agencies in the past is to just go ahead and ask the providers if, if they are able to give an export or a copy of the, of the complete records. And if they can do that, then that's, that's very helpful. If they cannot, then the agency is responsible for implementing capture requirements via another method. So if they can provide the export, then instructions for notification or when this should happen and any export requirement should be given to that provider. Another situation that could happen is that the provider could go out of business, the social media tool, or it could be bought by another company and um, instructions for notification should also be included for this type of situation in the terms of service agreement, which we'll talk about now. So as we, as we included in the last bulletin and also the cloud computing bulletin, we've included this general clause for use in terms of service agreements with social media providers. This clause is also included in the federal friendly or the federally compatible model terms of service agreement that is maintained by GSA. Uh, GSA has negotiated terms of service agreements with a number of social media providers, and it includes these on a registry on their howto.gov website. But it's still up to the agency to negotiate their own agreements or choose to use the GSA agreements. And on that website, GSA provides guidance on negotiating terms of service agreements with providers. Keep in mind that even though a tool may be on that list, your agency may not have approved the terms of service agreement for that tool. Each agency considers its own policies, needs, expectations, practices, and conducts a legal review before signing any agreements. So if you're not sure, I would check with your, your general counsel to be sure that there's, there's an approved agreement, or if someone in your agency asks. So some things to note, agencies must determine any capture-related issues and then include those in agreements with providers when possible or when is necessary. This clause in front of you does not include any stipulations about capture. 
and agencies that have contracts for cloud computing guidance or services, services should follow this records management guidance. And as I said, agencies will have additional business, legal, security requirements that they should consider in, in the procurement process or should be included in agreements when possible. We also included a question in this bulletin to explain how, how it relates to the larger Managing Government Records Directive. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, the directive was issued last August by the National Archives and OMB and is the beginning of an executive wide uh, branch, excuse me, an executive branch wide effort to reform records management policies and practices and to develop a 21st century framework for the management of government records. So while this bulletin that we're talking about today isn't mandated by the directive, there are several actions required by the directive that will assist agencies when, when addressing records management challenges that are raised by social, social media. These related projects include the updated transfer guidance that uh, will be coming out before the end of the year and a project for goal A3.1 in the directive to investigate automated technologies to manage diverse collections of digital records. And that also includes social media as part of that research into automated technologies. So you can find out much more information on this project on the NARA records management website. And it's linked from the records management section. Um, we also mentioned that there will be updated general record schedules. And this is part of um, a five-year effort to, to revise and update those. Some other resources that uh, we include in the bulletin and I want to draw your attention to is a white paper on best practices for social media capture. This provides some best practices and a non-exhaustive list of available tools for social media capture. As we've mentioned before, the Records Express blog is the place to go for any new guidance or upcoming events. You can also see updates on what the Chief Records Officer is working on with our agency partners on different records management activities. Some other resources, there was a report um, from 2010 on Federal Web 2.0 use and record value. It's more of a, an assessment of the record value of social media records. You can take a look at that. Also the toolkit. This is where we collect records management guidance and best practices, and that's available on NARA's website. And also an FAQ about records management. So I wanted to take just a few moments to also mention that white paper on best practices for capturing social media records. And in this white paper, we looked at the current state of social media capture in the federal government at the time of publication. And so that was published uh, in May of this year. Uh, we also reviewed agency social media policies that are available on their websites to see how they address a social media capture. Uh, we found a few examples that we included in the bulletin. And as I said, this was published in May. So there very well may be updates to some of these. In the white paper, we also included a list of tools and services that are available for use for social media capture. And these were, these is a list of the tools at the time of publication. We found that many of these tools uh, come and go and their capabilities may change. Well, this is the case often for a number of the tools available for Twitter. But uh, I would encourage you to take a look at this section of the paper and to see if, if you are using any of these tools or if there could be some that would be helpful at your agency. So you can contact me at my email address with any questions. And I see I still have Jill Snyder on there. I'm sure she'd be happy to take any questions as well. So Chuck said, uh, as a records officer, how would we even be aware of the social media content? If OIT are reviewing and tracking social media, do we make sure that OIT involves us, the records officer, in the process of the review? 
Yeah, so I'm guessing that's maybe Office of Information Technology. So I, they would, they might be the the team or the the people that are responsible for creating content and posting it on sites, and also providing comments and feedback to people that respond. So I think that can often be an issue is that the records officers may not be aware of the social media content. I believe as part of the open government, all agencies have a page on their website where they have a listing of all of the social media tools in use at their agency. So that could be a good place just to start to see all of the, the pages that are in use. I know we have that at the National Archives, we have a, a list of all of the Facebook and YouTube and Twitter channels by location around the country. So that the first step would be, yes, being aware of the social media content and then um, making sure that they do involve you, possibly forming that working group that I mentioned and inviting them to the table and talking about which content Talking about the, you know, doing inventory of what content is out there and um, making sure that there are record schedules that apply. So, so that would be a yes to make sure that they, they involve the records officer or the records management staff. You may not have to be involved in all of the review of the content itself, not the day-to-day -day, day -day business of posting and sharing information, but definitely being involved in, in the assessment of, of if that content includes records. Okay, so uh, Jo Lynn said, similar to when we put a notice in the local papers, the record would be the hard copy notice that we submit. Would it be logical then to convey to our public affairs group that they do, that they do have a hard copy of the message in their files prior to inputting it into social media? Well, this is uh, this is a good part of that awareness of being available, uh, being aware of how these processes work within your agency. So I'm not sure exactly how this process works, but it may be may be a process that used to be in uh, a paper paper based form and is now done electronically. So that would have to be the decision of looking at is the the paper based form the the um, the record, or is it the electronic process that's the record? And I will point out that the, in the in the Managing Government Records Directive, um, this encourages uh, agencies to move toward electronic record keeping. So that's just something to consider. But um, yeah, I think that would be good to sit down with the Public Affairs Group and talk about which is the official record and where things are being kept, and who's responsible for keeping them, and who's responsible for doing the capture. Next, we had a question from Stacy. She said, just like with search and, and other needs that all agencies need, GSA provides a tool for all agencies, helpful for smaller agencies with small social media staff. Can NARA work with GSA to identify a tool to capture records and provide tool support. Also, is NAR working with GSA on um, uh, TOS for tool capture that there are separate from the SM tools available to us? Okay, I'm, I'm not sure which tool you refer to. The, they provide a tool for all agencies. So they provide um, generally in their, their web, web services part of their page, they include topics such as social media and that's where they provide the social media registry and other tools. Um, can NARA work to, with GSA in identifying a tool? So we are not currently working with GSA to identify tools for capture. That's still something that is, is in the responsibility of the agency. Um, we did talk to GSA at one point when we were, we were developing the white paper. I had conversations with them about different tools that they had used as an agency. And it was still a work in progress trying to figure out which, which tools provide uh, the best capture of, of their social media records. And so kind of the, the white paper is uh, an assessment of where we were in, in this year talking about these things. And these, are, these discussions will continue to evolve and uh, we'll continue to look at 
at capture tools and what's what's out there and what's available. And we'll we'll try to find uh, a place to put these so that everyone everyone can be aware of them. And then it's still it's still at the individual agency level to work out terms of service agreements for capture tools. GSA works on terms of service for the free social media tools, and this is separate from a procurement process that each agency would have to do at their level. So we're not looking we're not working on a terms of service agreement for any social media capture tools. Uh, Shelley, uh, so are you saying that NAR will revise the GRS to include social media dispositions? The, the revisions of the, the GRS are, are underway, and that's something that they reviewed, that team reviewed, and that they're considering. It's a challenging thing to do as each platform is, is different and agency's use may differ, differ um, from agency to agency, but that is something that they're considering and trying to, trying to work on. But at this point, there is not a, general, there's not a GRS. So agencies are responsible for identifying and scheduling their social media content. Let's see, Gail says, has NARA looked into Gov Delivery to perform all of the social media tasks, including web capture? I don't think we have. So this is separate. There's the, the NARA actually capturing their social media side of the house, and then we do the, the policy side for, for federal agencies. So I don't know. If NARA's internal records management or social media team has looked at gov delivery, it could be something that we are interested. We'll explore that definitely. Does NARA use a specific tool for capturing social media content? NARA's social media team and records management staff are, uh, I believe, still investigating a number of tools, and I know that they've experimented with using. Why am I blanking on the names now? They have, they have used Archive Social and tried a number of other tools to capture social media content. So that's, that's separate from, from my office, so the work that they're doing. But they are trying different things to, to see what works. Okay, looks like Gail had a question. My agency currently uses Hootsuite to manage our Twitter and Facebook postings. We sat through a presentation on Gov Delivery. It's supposed to be for one-stop shopping. Uh, it's something we need to check further into ourselves. That's one that I know Nara has looked at too. So we will thank you for that information. It's always good to know what agencies have tried or what, what's worked and what hasn't worked. I'd also be interested in hearing any feedback on that. Okay, it may be good to have a NARA site to share social media policies that have been developed by agencies like you. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good idea. Thank you, Victor. So this does complete today's briefing. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Beth, did you have any final words that you wanted to say? No, just thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We hope you found this seminar useful. For more information about the U.S. National Records Management Training Program, please visit www.archives.gov. Also, our current workshop schedule for both face-to-face -face and web-based training is available online at nar.learn.com.